I was a, uh, a re first year resident at the University of Chicago. And um, in college, I had sung at Wayne State University in the, in the chorus, the Wayne State University chorus. As far as I could tell, the only prerequisite for getting into that chorus is that you had to have a beating heart. Uh, I, there was no real musical talent, but if you tried out for it and you could sort of sing anything, they got you in the chorus, a big chorus. And I loved singing with, with other people. Well, when I was an intern in Cleveland, uh, life was so hectic, there was no time for music. I got to be, uh, then I moved to Chicago for my first year of residency, and I missed music. A friend of mine, one night at a party, encouraged me to try out for the Chicago Symphony Chorus. And I said, no, nah, I'm not that good, I can't get in. But my friend was persistent and sort of almost shamed me into, uh, into doing this. He had a very good voice. So I called up and I made an appointment for an addition to the Chicago Symphony Chorus and they said that I should bring some mu music and, and sing something for them. I didn't know what to do. I had no music. So I decided I would, um, I would um, sing one of the choral parts from the Bach B minor Mass and I had a recording of it. I put it on the, my phonograph and I rehearsed it. And I decided, this is nuts. I, I can't. This is totally presumptuous on my part. So I figured, what the hell? I'll sing what I know. So I didn't have any music. So I showed up at the audition. The choral director was a brilliant, talented woman named Margaret Hillis, who herself had been trained by Robert Shaw. And she had a pianist, an accompanist. I, it was some big building on Michigan Avenue in downtown Chicago. And I showed up and I said, you know, I don't, I don't have any music. I don't know what to do, but I know Yiddish folk songs, and I will sing you a Yiddish folk song. I think, think, think to myself, boy, this is really, mm -hmm. you know, but what the hell? Well, she seemed quite interested. So I sang Tumbala Laika. Anyway, I sang the song. I knew all the verses. The pianist didn't have any, I had no music. So she sat there and listened. And Margaret Hillis sat there and listened. And to my utter astonishment, she accepted me into the chorus. Well, I was overwhelmed. There were no cell phones at the time. I was single, I didn't have any wife to tell, so I wanted to go and call my parents to tell them. So I had to go find a pay phone somewhere in Chicago, on Michigan Avenue somewhere, to call my mother and father in Detroit and say, do you know what just happened? I just sang Tumble to Laika for the show. And I got into the Chicago Symphony Chorus. That, that was uh, probably one of the best things I ever did, because it got me involved in more music making. I ended up in the Cleveland Orchestra Chorus when I moved back to Cleveland. And uh, it was, a, was and is a wonderful part of my life. But I've never forgotten that experience. I think to myself, what chutzpah? God, Broder, that was real nerve. The interesting thing is, many, many years later, after I moved away from Chicago, I was in the Chicago Symphony Chorus for one year. Many, many years later, um, Margaret Hillis came to Western Massachusetts to do something with a chorus at one of the summer festivals. And after the performance, my wife and I went back to see her. She looked at me and she said, hi, Marty, how are you? She remembered me after all those years. I was just one of 200 people in the Chicago Symphony Chorus, but maybe, I guess maybe the fact that I had the temerity to sing an unaccompanied Yiddish folk song to this woman maybe m must have stuck in her mind. It was a wonderful experience. You sing what you know.